Hello and welcome to Meeting with the Mayor. And today we have a very, very special guest, Joaquin Zamora uh, from District 2. I call you JJ. Of course. Okay, how are you, JJ, Mayor? How are you doing today? Doing very well. Thank you for asking. And now, you know, the president does 100 days and measured by what they do in 100 days. So you've been <laughs> elected for about 50 days now. Yeah, that's and correct. Everything. And so uh, how's everything going? Everything's going very well. I've been very, very pleased. Uh, it's really, truly a, a great honor and a privilege, a blessing. Uh, to be here, uh, to be here for my city. I was born and raised here. Uh, my family's lived off North 23rd uh, for over 60 years. So it really is something uh, very special for me and my family uh, to contribute in another way uh, to our city. Well, great. And now, professionally, you're a lawyer. Yes, sir, I am. I'm an assistant criminal district attorney working for you, Hidalgo County, for the last 19 years, uh, both under Mr. René Guerra and our current dis uh, district attorney, Ricardo Rodriguez, Jr. So now district attorneys can't get involved in politics too much and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, too little. Right. So this is your first political uh, office that you've had? Yes, right? as a matter of fact, this is the first election I've ever run. I never ran for student council or anything in, at the university or school, uh, law school level. So this was my first election period. And I, I remember at the polling place, I've, I think I met all your family. Yes. And a great, great family. You had a whole bunch, of everybody out yeah. there and they obviously uh, enjoyed it. I guess. Yes, they did. They had a wonderful time. They especially had a good time meeting you because to them it's a privilege to meet the mayor of Mac Allen, and uh, I think it was a very good election for everybody and, and trying to bring out the vote. Yes. And now you, one of the things we talk about is uh, the single member district since we've had it was a concept that would be uh, the commissioner would be no more what's going on in an inv individual area as opposed to citywide is just difficult. And so you campaigned a lot kn knocking on doors. And yes, as a matter of fact, uh, I, I got a, uh, some, some, some uh, recommendations uh, to do that, that, that how the best way to get to, for people to know you is to actually literally go out to knock on doors. So I've been blessed with my wife, Elizabeth, and my daughter, Emily. Uh, we, we have estimate that we knocked about 2,800 to 3,000 doors in, in District 2. I did that, but you know, like one third of the people would be home and then one third would be voters. And right, <laughs> right. And if you go off these voter lists, yeah. it, you know, they may have already moved or yeah. gone on. But you know, truly that was an exciting experience. And it was one thing that I felt that win or lose, it was an experience that I would always remember. And uh, you know, you really find out how great a city we are. We have wonderful citizens here in McAllen. We have people offer us dinner, offer us water, you know, sit down and you know, get away from the shade. If we needed sunscreen, they would offer that. I mean, we really are blessed with a wonderful city, Mayor. It's, it's just a great city. I, I did a lot of neighborhood uh, venues and it always turned into a meal and all yeah. that and people come over <laughs> and it was like a party and uh, yes. yeah, really great. We have great citizens and you know, it's, it's kind of funny. They're very engaged. I, I noticed on voting, you know, is we don't vote um, very much in city elections. We do really well in presidential elections and just getting people out to vote some difficult right. uh, deal. I, I chalk it up that a lot of people are pretty happy with what's going on, I would guess. Yes, I, I would chalk it up as well. Um, I, I think sometimes there is some voter apathy, but I, I think that's just where as uh, the elected officials, we need to sometimes go out there, be proactive, encourage our citizens, how much power they really do have, uh, getting them involved either through advisory boards, uh, getting them involved in committees, uh, so that way they can really see how the government functions and so they can also understand that it's just not like flipping a switch to get things done. There's a process, there's due process in terms of rezoning, variances, uh, getting city projects done. And it just doesn't, you know, stop on a dime and turn around and change. I mean, there is a process and sometimes time uh, to do all those things. And, and you know, I hope you, you're going to go through budget in a little while. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a lot of a lot of nights we'll spend at the golf course, yeah. not, not playing golf. Not, anymore, obviously not playing, playing golf. golf. Yeah. And so you're going to learn a budget. It's a, you know, it's about a 250 million dollar business. And so it's a lot of people think, well, you run the city and you just pick up trash. And here it's it's pretty complicated business, especially you know we own bridges and all those kind of things. And I'm sure you're excited to, um, to do that. Yes, yeah, actually very much so. Uh, this is where, you know, I've, I felt when I was campaigning, this is the meats and potatoes of our city. You know, our drainage, our sewer, our police, our, our fire safety, uh, streets, gutter, uh, trash collection. I mean, that's really the bare bones, our parks. Uh, but also to understand that it takes money to operate that. And more importantly, once we have a facility or an improvement, is the maintenance component. Right, and, that, and that's something we really need to concentrate. We were talking about that the other day. Now the convention center is 10 years old and maintenance as a facility gets older, maintenance increases and, right. and you just can't add a park and not add a person. Exactly. You know, to do that, so I know um, it's very interesting on, uh, uh, from a standpoint of single member district. What do, you, what do you think is your mission or vision for your district? Oh, mm -hmm. my, my vision for my district is to get more uh, voter uh, uh, or rather citizen participation in our city. 
Um, and, and, I, and going through some of the advisory boards, I see that there's very little participation uh, in the advisory boards, and that's simply because there's not a lot of applicants. So I had already promised that I would go back through the neighborhoods, uh, I intended it in the summer, but I realized it may be a little too hot, but maybe in the early fall to go back, uh, reintroduce myself or introduce myself for the first time, and, and identify community leaders. You know, get to the point where you have community leaders in the, in the neighborhoods that we have. There's about 45 neighborhoods in District 2, and have them to have, the, you know, I give them my personal phone number, a, a good email address, so if they hear concerns in their own neighborhood, I'm just a phone call away, I can go there that same afternoon, and, you know, let's talk about it. That, that's a great idea uh, because you can focus the leaders in individual neighborhoods and then um, then you don't have to have the whole neighborhood there. You have the representative from the neighborhood. Exactly, exactly. And usually those people are involved. Uh, you know, we, we're one of the few cities that actually organizes neighborhood associations because uh, either they're expired or they never had them in the first place. And so we know we collect dues through the rent, I mean, through the water bill, and then they can fund it that way. And I think there's about 50 of them now. And so that's a great way to find out what's going on in your district and meet with, um, instead of meeting with 5,000 people, you can meet with 500 or 50 and get to pretty good idea. Exactly. As a matter of fact, you raised the neighborhood association. Uh, I belong to, or I live in Las Bandetas neighborhood off the 29th and uh, Buddy Owens. And unfortunately, our homeowners association is pretty much dissolved. It's not been active. And so this weekend or in the next coming weeks, I'll be meeting with, in my own neighborhood, having to restart our neighborhood association. And you'll get to meet as many people. You'll make it a little block party, a meet and greet, and understanding that, hey, we do have some cartilage along 29th that needs to be mowed every once in a while. And this is the mechanism we can you know, collect and, and, and have someone and pay somebody to pay, uh, cut that. And I know you do your homework at city commission meetings. You even look up some <laughs> things. And so you, you, I think one thing you're going to find is you can spend as many, as much time as you want being a city commissioner. Yes. And so this is a great opportunity to thank your wife and your family yes. for letting you be city commissioner. Very much. So I'm very grateful for my wife, Elizabeth, and my daughter, Emily, uh, for being part of uh, and giving me the opportunity to represent city commissioner. Uh, this is something that they, they really want to be part of. And so good luck. I really look forward to thank working you with you. Thank you very much, Barry. Very exciting. Likewise. And this has been Meeting with the Mayor. Thank you very much.